Namaste everyone. Welcome to Prepare with Lakshmi. Today we will be discussing about the poem Easter 1916 by William Butler Yeats. We have already read about William Butler Yeats in the previous poems uh, No Second Troy and uh, Adam's Curse and all. So I am not going to repeat it again. You can uh, pause the video and read about the poet over here. And also his relationship with Maud Gone. Who was Maud Gone in William Butler Yeats's life? We have already discussed. I am not going to read it again in this poem. So let's move on to Easter 1916. As soon as we look at the title of the poem, we think maybe this is about the festival or resurrection of Jesus from the dead. This is talking about that. But no, this poem is not about Jesus or the religious uh, importance. Easter 1916 is a poem by William Butler Yeats describing the poet's emotions regarding the events of the Easter rising staged in Ireland. Now, in Ireland during the Easter Monday, there was an uprising which was unsuccessful. The Irish Republican leaders fought for independence from uh, British, but the British stalled it because of the world war and these leaders wanted to have a part of independence from the Britishers and they fought for independence and the Britishers executed the most important leaders and this poem is about William Butler Yeats's emotions about that uprising and the execution and the people who were executed some of them were friends also one of the person john mcbride who was uh, executed was maud gone's husband so he also gives some of the names of the leaders who have fought and lost their lives in this poem so the poem was written between May and September 1916 but first published in 1921 in the collection Michael Roberts and the Dancer. Easter 1916, some of the background I have given over here so that you will know what he was feeling about. Even though Yeats was a committed nationalist, he usually rejected violence as a means to secure Irish independence and as a result had strained relationships with some of the figures who eventually led to uprising. Those people who fought for uprising and executed was a, were most close friends of uh, William Butler Yeats and he always has this feeling in his mind that he was not enough. He did not lose his life. He did not fight for independence of Ireland. He has this thought always in his mind and he thinks, what have I done? I am nothing worth when we compare to them. I am nothing. That is what he feels in his mind. He says, at least those people believed in something to which they thought uh, uh, even death can deserve. Death is deserving. But I did not. So he, he feels bad about himself. He regrets uh, the choice he has taken. But he thinks violence is not the answer for uh, fight. Uh, violence is not the answer for fighting for independence. The deaths of these revolutionary figures at the hands of the British, however, was as much a shock to Yates as it was to ordinary Irish people at the time who did not expect the events to turn uh, to have such a bad turn. Yates was working through his feelings about the revolutionary moment in this poem and the insistent refrain that a terrible beauty is born turned out to be present as the execution of the leaders of the Easter Rising by the British had the opposite effect of that intended. They thought that the, the Britishers thought that they will just suppress the Irish people but what happened is instead of dissipation they reinvigorated people uh, became more aware and they um, uh, what do you say they went on for uh, re they rebelled against the britishers what they wanted they wanted to suppress but they um, fanned the fire that is what has happened so easter rising very very simple and a beautiful poem uh, let us uh, read about the poem i am going to read the stanza 
and then explain it line by line i have also bolded and highlighted some of the words to remember the poem easily i have met them at close of day coming with vivid faces from counter or desk among gray 18th century houses i have passed with a nod of the head or polite meaningless words or have lingered a while and said polite meaningless words and thought before i had done of a mocking tale or a jibe to please a companion around the fire at the club being certain that they and i but lived where mortley is worn all changed changed utterly a terrible beauty is born so in the first stanza the poet is explaining how he used to meet them ordinarily before the uh, they rebelled and they were executed before that he used to regularly meet him in their ordinary lives i have met them who is them the irish rebels who rebelled against britishers he used to meet them at close of day close of day means at the end of the business day who were coming up with coming with vivid faces vivid means strong emotions played on their faces from counter or desk among gray 18th century houses he is explaining the ireland and uh, that uh, at that time the houses were 18th century houses and they they that is the rebels used to come when after finishing the day from their counter or a desk that is the day job whatever job they were having i have passed with a nod of the head now the poet is saying i have seen them in their ordinary lives i used to meet them casually he used to acknowledge them with a nod of the head when we see when we see somebody who we know we just smile or have a uh, have a few uh, polite words with them how are you yeah fine like that so he is saying i just used to pass them with a nod of the head just acknowledging them or having polite meaningless words simply having a few polite words with them or have lingered a while lingered a while means staying back and having a few uh, words with them talking with them and said polite meaningless words and thought before i had done even though when he was talking to them he was already thinking about some tale some interesting story or a jibe or a remark he wanted to uh, share with a friend at a club that means what he was talking to them was not important he was just talking as a uh, what do you say um, somebody you know just you know that person so you are just talking to that person like that so he is already thinking about some interesting uh, story to share with a companion at a club being certain that they and i but lived where motley is worn motley means different appearances are very very different so he is saying we are just different people we uh, i used to live with them where we are all common people ordinary lives having ordinary lives but suddenly changed it all changed changed utterly a terrible beauty is born this ordinary life changed into something extraordinary something which wasn't a terrible beauty was born something something happened and something took place which changed this ordinary sequence of the day that is what he is saying that woman's days were spent in ignorant goodwill her nights in argument until her voice grew shrill what voice more sweet than hers when young and beautiful she wrote to harriers this man had kept a school and rode our winged horse this other his helper and friend was coming into his force he might have won fame in the end so sensitive his nature seemed so daring and sweet his thought this other man i had dreamed a drunken vainglorious lout he had done most bitter wrong to some who are near my heart yet i number him in the song he too has resigned his part in the casual comedy he too has been changed in his turn transformed utterly a terrible beauty is born uh, in this stanza the poet talks about some of the rebels and their personalities what they used to do before they were executed in their ordinary lives what they were he was talking about that in that he talks about a woman who was who spent in ignorant goodwill she wanted to bring about positive change in the society she was ignorant means she was misguided she thought that she can bring about positive change in the society and she used to argue so much 
at night uh, with her friends about the political uh, changes that her voice grew shrill but she still she never gives up she had what voice more sweet than hers when young and beautiful she wrote to harry he was saying she, when she was young and beautiful her voice was very beautiful and sweet and what she had done to that voice by arguing on the political thing she has wrote it to harriers harriers means very coarse shrill voice she has changed that too so this is one woman he is talking he was talking about and then he talks about another man this man had kept a school he was talking about another person who was executed who had who was running a school and rode our winged horse now winged horse in greek mythology was a pegasus okay that represents liberty okay freedom and all these things so this person had this freedom liberty bravery everything in his mind so he was running a school and he had he wanted that freedom liberty he represents that that is why he went on to fight for uh, freedom for ireland this other his helper and friend now he is talking about one another another person who was his helper and friend who was coming into his force means he was still young into his occupation or a job into his force means he was still finding his talent he was talented and he was finding his occupation finding his foot on the uh, in his occupation he might have won fame in the end so the poet says he was good at his job he would have become famous if he had pursued his occupation or his job so sensitive his nature seemed so daring and sweet his thought he was saying his thought was sweet and daring he would have become definitely famous if he had pursued his occupation or pursued his job and then he talks about this another person who was a drunken vainglorious lout drunken you know he is a drunk drunkard vainglorious means glorious means famous vain useless fame he used to boast about himself okay loud means a person aggressive man who used to talk loudly this drunken vainglorious loud now from this words itself we come to know that the poet doesn't like this person okay otherwise he would not have referred to him as vainglorious loud but he goes on to say he had done most bitter wrong to some who are near my heart the poet goes on to say why he says this person is like this because this person has hurt somebody who was very close to poet's heart he has hurt someone who was very very close to the poet's heart that is why he represents him as vain glorious loud still he says yet i number him in the song yet i am talking about him in the song because i have enough respect for that person because he went on to fight and got executed for ireland's freedom he says still i respect this person enough he too has resigned his part in the casual comedy what is a casual comedy he is talking about here the ordinary life of a person is casual comedy if you remember in the previous stanza he says motley worn all the people were wearing this motley motley is normally worn by a jester or a joker who wears a patchwork cloth okay you know all the patches patches this kind of a overcoat or cloth he wears he is called as a motley means he is a joker he are casual comedy he refers to our ordinary lives is a casual comedy okay he too has been changed in his turn transformed utterly so this person also he stresses this person he is also say, the poet is also saying that this person also gave up his life for something that has happened that was very uh, bad thing that has happened but it changed the history of ireland from this um, from this very bad thing something new terribly new beauty was born he is talking about the uprising of the easter here so he is talking in this stanza about all the people the rebels who used to have ordinary lives before the uprising hearts with one purpose alone through summer and winter seem enchanted to a stone to trouble the living stream the horse that comes from the road the rider the birds that range from cloud to tumbling cloud minute by minute they change 
A shadow of cloud on the stream changes minute by minute. A horse hoof slides on the brim and a horse splashes within it. The long-legged moor hens dive and hens to moor cocks call. Minute by minute they live. The stones in the midst of all. In this stanza, the poet talks about the dedication these rebels have in their mind. Their minds are unchanged about the uh, fight they are going to have with the British. They, they did not change their minds about fighting against British. He says, hearts with one purpose alone through summer and winter seem enchanted to a stone. Their hearts were like a stone. They were unchanged even though everything around them is changing. So he goes on to explain what all are changing around them. Still, their, their dedication towards the fighting, the rebelling against the British did not change. Their minds did not change. He goes on to stay, say that a living stream means a flowing stream in that if a stone is sitting, the stone is not moving away with the water. It sits there even though around it the water is moving, the water is changing but the stone sits there without any change. That is how he is explaining. Then he goes on to explain the horse that comes from the road, the rider, the birds that range from cloud to tumbling cloud, means the birds flying in the sky. Minute by minute these things change. The horse and the rider are moving. They are changing. A shadow of the cloud on the stream changes by minute by minute. Means a shadow of the cloud on the stream. When the stream is moving or the cloud is moving, that is also changing. A horse who slides on the brim and the horse splashes within it means in the stream when the horse is moving in in the water when it the, when the hoof, hoof of the horse slips and hits the water it splashes and the horse is moving it is also changing the long legged moor hens dive and hence to moor cocks call means the cocks when they are calling the hens they are replying back and here also the life is changing minute by minute but the stones in the midst of all the stone is sitting in between mist means in between all this changing life it's not moving at all there is no change in the stone they in same way the heart of these rebels is like a stone it has been decided they are dedicated in the rebelling so this rebellion they are de they have fully committed to it and they are not going to change this decision even though everything around them is changing he is comparing their uh, willpower of fighting to that of a stone which is unmoving their mind is unmoving like that of the stone sitting in a living stream no longer sacrifice can make a stone of the heart Oh, when may it suffice, that is heaven's part, our part to murmur name upon name. As a mother names her child when sleep at last has come on limbs that had run wild. What is it but nightfall? No, no, not night, but death. Was it needless death after all? For England may keep faith for all that is done and said. We know their dream, enough to know they dreamed and are dead. And what if excess of love bewildered them till they died? I write it out in a verse. Magdona and Magbride and Connolly and Pierce, now and in time to be, wherever green is sown, are changed, changed utterly. A terrible beauty is born. So he is saying in this stanza about the people who have sacrificed their life for Ireland. Too long a sacrifice can make a stone of the heart. He says the heart will lose its feelings and it will become into a stone when you are thinking, when you have given up too much in life for your goals. Oh, when may it suffice? He is asking, when, it is, when is it enough? So many uh, people, so many leaders have sacrificed their lives. Is it enough? He is asking. That is heaven's part. Now again the poet says that question is not for me to answer. That is for 
God to answer. What is our part? What is it we can do? We can murmur name upon name. He is saying we can remember them for their sacrifices with respect and love. We can name them. We can remember their name again and again with love and respect for their sacrifice. As a mother names her child when sleep at last has come on limbs that had run wild. How we have to remember them like a mother remembers a child. Mother remembers a child with lots of love. Okay, so same way we have to remember them. How a mother remembers a child when it has run so much in the morning and at night it goes to sleep and mother remembers what kind of problem the child has brought. But at the end of the day, she loves the child. Same way he says we have to remember them like a mother remembers a child. What is it but night, nightfall? He is asking what is it? They are sacrificed. They are killed. Is it like a nightfall? Like they are going to sleep today and tomorrow they will get up? No, no, not night but death. Now he says no, it is not a nightfall. They did not go to sleep temporarily and tomorrow they will get up. No, it is a death. They are killed. They are gone. They are not going to come back again. Was it needless death after all? Now again he is questioning. Whatever they have sacrificed their life, was it a needless death? Was their sacrifice in vain? Was it useless death? He is asking. Because for, for here explains because England may keep faith for all that is done and said. Keep faith means England might have given Ireland its freedom. England might have kept its word and given the freedom whichever it has told before the world war started so maybe england might have given ireland freedom and instead these uh, leaders gave up their life in vain in needlessly they had given up their life we know their dream enough to know they dreamed and are dead so he is saying we know what they dreamed about they dreamed about ireland's independence that we know and enough to know that they gave, gave up their life they sacrificed their life for this goal they committed so much that they gave up their life for independence of ireland and what if excess of love bewildered them till they died he is asking what if their judgment was clouded maybe due to excess of love towards the country their judgment the rebel they they rebelled against British, Britain which was clouded the, the decision they had taken may be wrong but what if it was wrong he was asked. I write it out in a verse now he is saying he is giving some names with who were the important leaders during this rebellion okay they were McDonough and McBride and Connolly and Pierce these are the people who fought who were very important leaders during the Irish rebel rebellion now and in time to be wherever green is worn are changed changed utterly now he is saying whenever wherever green is worn the uh, irish um, uniform the color when whenever it is worn these people will be remembered with a lot of respect and love because their ordinary lives have changed changed utterly the ordinary lives of people are gone and they sacrifice their lives for Irish independence, for Ireland's independence. And from this sacrifice, a terrible beauty is born. From this destructive force, what was the destruction that happened? These leaders were executed, which was a shock to Yates as well as to Irish people that Britain would have taken such a uh, cruel um, decision against this Irish rebellions which was not forethought so here from giving from execution a terrible beauty is born he said the people became more aware about why these people were executed so this is such a beautiful poem about Easter uprising in 1916 how these people fought and McBride John Mc, Captain uh, John McBride was the husband of Maud Gone whom uh, John uh, William Butler Yates was sweet upon and this is a beautiful poem which we have read. 
i hope you enjoyed the poem as much as i have and uh, i'll meet you with my next video have a